Hey, this is Matt O'Leary, and today I'll be reviewing the fifth full-length album from Montreal rock band The Besnard Lakes, entitled A Coliseum Complex Museum. Two of this band's albums have been nominated for the Polaris Prize, uh, which is an award given to the best Canadian full-length album of the year. Uh, I think Caribou has won this in the past. Uh, those albums are The Besnard Lakes Are The Dark Horse and The Besnard Lakes Are The Roaring Night. To me, they don't really have a standout album, but there really are no stinkers in the bunch. Their material really is analogous in many ways with huge crossover, particularly in the, in the lyrical themes and the whole aesthetic of the band, but also very much in the sound. They're a band that, that really doesn't pull many tricks. There's, there's lots of slow to mid-tempo, 4-4 four, four beats with, with eighth notes, sun kiss, psychedelic guitar strums. And not many bands are better represented by the generic genre name rock. And while I love the straightforward approach of this, this mixture of psychedelic and kind of a southern tinged My Morning Jacket quality, in 2016 this sound really isn't cutting it. And that's not saying they don't mix it up with more progressive song structures. A song like Pressure of Our Plans, the third track here, really displays that. I love in the past how they've been able to avoid this predictable three and a half minute song, and that's really what drew me to them originally. In fact, they probably experimented most with alternative songwriting on their last album from 2013, Until Excess, Imperceptible UFO. The opening track from this album that I'm reviewing right now a Coliseum Complex Museum called A Bray Road Beast demonstrates this ability to make a longer song bubble with tension and then eventually explode with satisfying melody. Leading off with a very Kevin Parker falsetto melody, the song just keeps adding and adding, moving from atmospheric and moody to emphemic and concrete. There's a clear build and climax, and I, I really wish that they were more able to recreate this more consistently, this, this movement in the song and this dynamic on the rest of the album. Jace Lassick again boasts his high, lilting Brian Wilson tone on the lead single, The Golden Lion. I saw in an interview that the band uh, kind of wanted with this album and the departure of their guitarist to create some shorter, more accessible kind of pop songs, and that's exactly what they do on this one. Although it's pretty hard not to notice the lethargic, pretty much blatant ripoff of the Billie Jean bass line chugging through the verses. I mean, it's Michael Jackson. Michael, Michael, Michael. Michael. The fourth track on here, Towers Sent Her to Sheets of Sound, has all the elements of a great Besnard Lake song. The towering and robust guitar tones, plus those major key locked in vocal harmonies. It's all there, but this is the point on the album when I start to grow really tired of the repetition. At this point, it's starting to feel like every song's been played at the same tempo and in the same key. But the fifth song comes along and kind of saves the day. It's the best track on here, The Plain Moon. The female vocals are great, and I don't think the band's ever sounded bigger than on the chorus here. It's really just a massive and heart-pumping moment. Unfortunately, the back half of this album falls into that on Dante, walking pace tempo that's really starting to feel stale at this point, uh, especially if you've heard their older stuff. It's really a shame because you take any individual song on this album and it's really solid, but the entire experience of the album feels way longer than it should. Uh, it, it's about 40 minutes, which is pretty average, but about halfway through you're starting to feel like it's pushing 50 to an hour just because of the repetition, uh, the similar tempos, the instrumentation. All of it just kind of loses that sense of freshness or excitement. It's really similar to just about the only problem I had with uh, Tame Impala's Currents, an album that many people loved, I loved, I put in my top 15 of the year, but, uh, and, and that's only because so many of the individual tracks were so good, um, but the whole album was lacking sort of the depth and, and the clever construction that made it feel dynamic as a, as a, complete experience. You know, I, I really shouldn't say too many bad things about the Besnard Lakes. I do love their simplistic approach. It seems like they're writing music that they genuinely love, um, but I was hoping for more on this one just because of 2013's album, which I thought was really a step in a more experimental, atmospheric, and uh, different direction, and this was almost a step back for me, in a way. 
Uh, I still like the sound of the band, and I'm excited for what's to come, but overall, 6 out of 10 on this one. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching my first video with this little picture-in-picture picture up here. If you want to see vinyl-related stuff, I do do... I do do. Instagram. That's where it's at. Uh, I also do a playlist of vinyl videos on my channel. Uh, so check that out, but for uh, more reviews, give me some suggestions. I want to review Stephen Wilson's new album, uh, but there are a ton of great albums at the end of January here that I'm just kind of itching to get into, so I'm excited about that. Let me know which ones you're excited about. Please comment, please like, please subscribe to this channel, share what you love about the Besnard Lakes and this album. Thanks again.